Hey y'all, it's Andrea here and Ben and Lane and Emily. We got the whole fam here. We are in the car or the truck again. We are going on another road trip. We are really tied to the farm this year. Uh, we don't have really any farm sitters this year, so no vacations for us. It's full-time farming. That's okay. Um, hopefully in the future we can work out for people to farm sit for us so we can get away at least for a vacation once a year but that's just the way it is right now so we are having to take these little road trips um, just day trips where we get up and we do all the chores ourselves we leave and then we're back by night time to take care of the farm and most of the time these trips are to go get stuff for the farm uh, animals or whatever you can see the kids in the back doing comments we're talking about all y'all's comments and answering those um, and I just want to say before I start what this video is about thank you so much for joining us here on our channel uh, we have had an influx of you guys this last week and it is awesome uh, we're so happy to have each and every one of you here we've been reading a lot of your comments well all of them actually and so I just want to give you a big fat VW welcome one other thing I want to say is I want you guys, if you are our subscribers and you had never heard of or maybe you'd never checked out Hidden Heights Farm and also Keeping It Dutch, you saw that we met them as well at Hidden Heights uh, House, Kevin and Rachel, and I just want y'all to know how great of people they all are. And I figure most of you guys have heard of Keeping It Dutch, but if not, check them out. And Hidden Heights is one of the newer channels. They've been on here a little over a year but they were so nice. I really want you guys to check them out because I feel like there's at least some of you who probably had not heard of them. So thank you to Kevin and Rachel for having us over. All right, so we actually failed. Their channels did not get linked in the video where we went to Oklahoma and picked up Dot the Pig. And so we're gonna go ahead and link them in this video. We've gone back and linked them in that video as well, but we're linking them today. So if you did not check them out, please check them out. Tell them VW Family Farm sent you. Um, I really want you guys to just go over, see what you think of their channel, and then tell them we sent you over. Lastly, speaking of Dot, he is doing awesome. Uh, I'm gonna do an update video for you guys really soon, probably this week, but I just want you to know in the meantime, he's doing great. He has made his place on our farm. Um, it's pretty funny actually because he went in with some bigger pigs but I'll tell you that whole story uh, he made his place and his presence known right away so I'll be telling you that this week so back to what are we doing today well you can see we got the stock trailer pulling behind us I don't know if you can see it I think so but we are pretty much fulfilling the beginning of a dream today aren't we Ben yep. so let's get to where are we going we are heading five hours north. If you're new here, we are in central Arkansas, like smack dab in the middle. And we are going pretty much straight north up into Missouri, the middle part of Missouri. And that is uh, grass-fed cattle country. That is where um, the grass-fed movement has really taken off as far as cattle goes. And they raise a specific breed, a lot of grass farmers up there. Um, if you're familiar with Greg Judy here on YouTube, he's, he's very famous. He's got it going on as far as cattle farming and grass-fed cattle farming and rotational grazing. And they raise um, up there, it's what he raises, it's called South Pole Cattle. So if you've never heard of South Pole Cattle, you might be thinking, what are those and why do you want them? Well, a couple things. We were introduced to South Poles uh, through Greg Judy here on YouTube. He is a pretty famous farmer. He has got his operation down. He has went from, you can watch his videos and his story, but he basically went from bankrupt and about ready to lose it all to he took a leap of faith and he has made a booming cattle business from the South Pole cattle and from rotational grazing. And just, he's a, he's a great uh, manager of his farm and he's a great person if you're getting started to watch and to get inspired by.
So South Pole cattle were actually developed by Teddy Gentry. Now you may be thinking, I don't know who that is, but actually you probably do, you just don't know it. He is part of the famous band Alabama and he's actually from Alabama and that is where he developed the South Pole breed. Um, it is actually a cross of four different types of cattle for different reasons. They added these four in. They're actually a cross of Hereford, Angus, Barzona, and Cinepole. That is the four breeds that they cross to make this awesome breed. And what is so great about this breed? What, what did they do to cross? What qualities did they uh, want to make this breed? Well, number one, they made a slick haired cow. If you watch Greg Judy and some of the other South Pole farmers, that is one thing you will notice is how beautifully slicked off they are. Um, they're not woolly, which up north, that's, that's great and that's fine to have them uh, a lot hairier than they are down here. But the fact is down here we have so much heat and humidity that uh, it's just easier for them to acclimate to our uh, hot, thick air if they don't have all that hair on them. They're also a smaller framed cow and Greg Judy has taught us a lot about that, that the bigger cow is not necessarily the better because your cows, um, if they're smaller, like say about a thousand or 1200 pounds, as opposed to getting on up to close to, you know, 1800 pounds or, or a big cow like that, they're gonna eat less as well as they're gonna just be gentler on your soil and your land. They're just not as heavy of a cow rotating throughout your pastures. So just because the cows are small frame does not mean that you're gonna get a bony little uh, puny calf that you're gonna try to then raise for beef. That's not how it is at all. Like I said, the cows are more of a smaller cow, but they will raise a great calf. Um, that's part of why some of those breeds were incorporated is for their maternal abilities. They're great at raising a calf. And then these cows are developed to be able to turn grass into beef. So you're not having to run them through a feedlot and pump them full of feed and uh, growth hormones and all that. They have the ability to eat grass and if you provide them good quality minerals, they can turn that into some of the best beef you will find. And there's actually been ultrasound and carcass data um, that proves that their meat is as or more tender than your standard English breeds. So. Um, these are just the way we want to go, but it's one of those deals you're going to get what you pay for. So this is step number one for us. There is what's called bull power in raising cattle. And that is the strategy we are implementing here. So we showed you on the last video how our bull got hurt um, and we had to wind up selling him. So we have to get another one. It's time for the cows to be bred and it's time for a bull to go in. So we're scraping up literally every dollar we could come up with to invest in a South Pole bull because that is step number one for us. While we cannot afford to go buy a whole herd of cows that are South Pole, this is our first step and uh, Ben actually thought this through. He's thought a lot about it and he told me and I was like, yes, that is a great idea. That's genius. Instead of starting with purebred South Poles, we're at least going to start with crossbreeds. So this means uh, what bull power means is you may not have the best herd of cows, but if you put a really great bull with them, you've just upped the value of your cattle by a tremendous amount. But with step number one, always comes step number two. So step number two will be down the road when we've made a little money off of these cows, which hopefully will happen one of these days. We haven't seen it yet, but um, maybe we can buy us some South Pole heifers and AI those. If you're not familiar with AI, that means artificially inseminate. You can buy the supplies to do that with online and then they would not be related to our bull. And so then we could keep them, we could keep their calves, all that kind of stuff. Hopefully by then have a new South Pole bull because we'll always, we're gonna always need more than one with as many cows as we have. And then the 
crossbreeds that we're going to be having hopefully next year from this bull we're buying today would not be related to our new bull that we would get so we can start just keeping a lot of the heifers that are born in our farm raising the bulls that are born for beef as you know we're trying to launch a big uh, meat selling company uh, to be able to ship meat to you guys and um, just all over the country so that is the exciting plans for VW Family Farm as far as the beef operation goes. So we got home really late last night. We're out here, it's the next afternoon. We're working cows. Uh, our whole herd was over here in this paddock. And then we have just ran through um, roughly, not quite, but roughly half of our cows with our big black bull. This is our center hot wire that goes all the way up to the house and to uh, the charger. That is the center of our whole operation. And then we have paddocks on both sides that we rotate down one side, back up the other. So like I said, we ran through about half of our cows and our big black bull, he's out there somewhere. And we are going to rotate them up that way towards the house. There's a pond up there, they can graze up there and he can take care of and breed that part of the herd. The new bull is right up there in a corral. He spent the night up there with um, food and water up there just to keep him safe and let him get acclimated. He is gonna, we're gonna bring him in a trailer down here to this group of cows. In the splitting process, we had a couple get out. You can hear Ben and the kids yelling. They're trying to get the cows and calves back in that got out. And so that bull is gonna come down here and he will service this group. Uh, why are we doing all that? Well, the short answer is we simply cannot afford another hurt bull this year. Um, when you put bulls together, they're gonna fight for a bit um, to establish their dominance. And we just cannot afford to lose another one uh, to him getting injured because of that. So uh, we're going to split him up. He will have his own herd of cows for right now, get used to our farm, and then they can get used to each other in the off season. And then probably next year they'll be fine going in together. Um, so we're just being extra cautious. And we've had another cow get in the wrong pasture. So they're hollering at me. I need to help them. We're going to show you bringing that bull down here and wrap this up. So you can see this cow right here is absolutely on the wrong side. 
I'm gonna get off and try to let this wire right here down and let her come up here. All right, got the, the cows that were out with the herd. So we're gonna leave these two groups across from each other for a bit because there's babies over here that belong with mamas over here. So we're gonna let them, they will right themselves here in a little bit. Uh, we got the baby cows with their moms. These are bigger calves. They will find their mama here pretty quick. Then we will come back and go ahead and let them further up that way to the pond and we're gonna bring the bull back here. I found an Amish man and his English daughter. What are y'all doing? I told him I found an Amish man and his English daughter. <laughs> his right hand girl. She loves her Amish daddy. <laughs> yeah. And his crazy outfits. And his shorts. And me flip flops with some. Green, what a cowboy. Green mud in my toenails. I don't think that's mud. All right, so he is really nervous. Uh, he was actually born at the farm we got him at, and they had raised him. He's about three years old, I believe Ben said. So he's never rode in a trailer, much less a five-hour ride. So he didn't know what to think. Um, but just to be honest, we're going to keep an eye on him and just learn his disposition and hope he's a good fit for our farm. But... Um, time will tell. We definitely want something that we can work with that we're not going to have to worry about running us over. So far he's running up there. Emily back up so maybe he'll run right in the trailer. So far he's going pretty good. I think he'll be better once we get him with a group of cows. So he loaded up pretty good. Were you nervous though when he kind of ducked at you a little bit? When he what? When he kind of like ducked at you, faked you out a little well, bit. Kind of like be be walking up to somebody say like the rock and him, you know, just kind of big and bulky like he is and trotty little me. A little intimidating. I ain't gonna lie to you. I told him we're going to have to just see if he's a good fit for our farm. It's not a done deal that he'll stay here for a long time, but yep. this is a good start on South Poles. But the dude is ripped. He is I mean, ripped. He, he is, uh, he's all muscle, that's for sure. He like, looks pretty, but he is intimidating a little bit. What'd you say, Lane? What'd I say what? He's got muscles on his muscles. Oh, yeah, his muscles have muscles. Yeah, he's, he's ripped. And he doesn't like, he's not good in a trailer. He's... As doesn't you can like see, he's, he doesn't like it. Some of them just load up and they're just calm as can be. Not this guy. I don't think this dude's ever been on a trailer. That's what I was telling him. I don't think so either. All right, let's take him to some ladies and I bet he'll calm down. Okay. You can see the cow's coming up out of curiosity. Ben is going to go back there and let him out. And then we're getting out of here. Um, not because we're afraid of him, but because we want him to not try to run off and jump the fence. Yes. So he is just going out in the middle of the cows. All right, so we moved up here quite a ways away from him so we wouldn't make him nervous. He is down in that group. You can see him um, walking back there. That's him in the back. That is great. He did not run off. Um, some of these cows should be in heat, so that should encourage him to stay with them. Um, so things are looking pretty good. It's always scary when you let one out. They could just take off and run pretty far away. So there he is. So he's actually already come up to the water trough. That's him right there. So that is excellent. He's checking out the cows, um, seeing who's in heat. He just acts like a totally different bull out of the trailer and out of the corral. So I think he's going to work out just fine. What do you think, Ben? You pleased? I think that dude's ripped. I yeah, can't get is. over how, how much. Does it make you want to go just pump some iron? Yeah. No, no. <laughs> Let's not go too far. So, guys, you will be hearing more about this as we head in this direction. We're super excited to be having a South Pole bull here on our farm. Even if his disposition doesn't wind up being the friendliest thing ever, 
Um, we can work with that. I think he will calm down with our rotational grazing system. They usually do with how hands-on we are. And uh, as we get some genetics going, we can possibly get some more south pole bulls and like I told you earlier in the video, some south pole heifers and get this thing going so that if we decide not to keep him specifically, we can definitely move in the direction of the south poles. So thanks for hanging out with us, going on our road trip and um, just thank you to all you who are new here and we hope you stick around and we hope you like what you see and we love having each and every one of you as part of our YouTube family. So I will see you guys on the next one. Thanks for watching and God bless.